Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with a Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on July 3rd, 2023, around 1130 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including more tropical waves that are moving westward in the tropical Atlantic, what impacts those will bring to the Lesser Antilles over the next several days, and more tropical systems that could be forming in the eastern Pacific. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, it is relatively quiet out there across the basin right now. However, we do have a few tropical waves right now moving off the coast of Africa. You can see this big cluster of shower and thunderstorm activity moving off the coast of Africa. And then over here in the Lesser Antilles, we're talking places like Trinidad, Tobago, up towards uh, or down towards Guyana, Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, etc., we have a fairly robust tropical wave that is going to be moving through starting now and lasting throughout the day tomorrow. You can see this tropical wave right here. It's actually fairly well developed. And this is the same wave that we were kind of monitoring over the last several days for potential development. And while this is not expected to develop into a tropical system of any sorts, this is still going to bring some very heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and the potential for flooding in spots over the next several days we could be talking about wind gusts up towards 50 miles per hour in spots uh, over the next several days there's a little bit of a curvature with the system today in the low level cloud features but overall no tropical activity is expected and of course this will be running into land over the next several days but the rest of the tropical atlantic is relatively quiet which is of course very good news Looking here into the Caribbean, there is a fairly strong tropical wave right now that is also moving into portions of Central America at this point. Places like Nicaragua and Honduras could be impacted by this fairly robust tropical wave as it moves westward. And over the next couple of days, this will also be bringing some heavy rainfall and gusty winds from time to time. The potential for mudslides, especially in those higher train elevation areas. So do keep a watchful eye on that. But this is not expected to develop into anything like a tropical depression or storm. And then in the eastern Pacific Basin, we are still watching one additional system out there. Right now, there is no real area of disturbance. But this general area within this orange here is where we could see our next tropical cyclone forming in the eastern pacific south of the coastal part of mexico right now the hurricane center gives us a 60 percent chance of development within the next seven days or the next week as this generally moves off towards the west northwest again we'll have to watch this for potential impacts to coastal mexico it is just too early to determine if that's going to happen at this given point Taking a look here at the sea surface temperature anomaly map. This was last updated as of yesterday, July 2nd. We noticed the developing moderate El Nino out here across the equatorial Pacific. Now this has at least cooled in recent weeks due to a fairly robust easterly wind burst where it's actually upwelled some cooler water to the surface. And interestingly enough, this negative PDO pattern, this Pacific Decadal Oscillation, when it's in this negative phase, all of this blue here, this is cooler than average waters across the Baja Peninsula, out towards California and Hawaii. This is not only helping to counteract the El Nino to some degree, but this is also keeping a lid on where exactly the most favorable area for hurricanes are in the eastern Pacific Basin. So really your most favorable area here, we'll draw it in green, is roughly going to be right through this corridor where the water temperatures are maximized. It can even extend that up to, uh, you know, coastal Mexico as well. But then in the Atlantic Basin, it's fairly warm, although we have seen some cooling in the last couple of weeks. But relative to average, this is still about two, you know, one and a half to two degrees Celsius above the long term average, fairly significant in the Atlantic Basin and certainly could bring some potential for more storms to form as we progress throughout later into July. And we've started to see some signaling here in the models that probably about mid-July, probably about the 18th onwards, we could be in a little bit more of a favorable pattern to allow storms to develop out here off the coast of Africa. 
In the Atlantic Basin, we're going to take a look here at the European ensembles. We're going to take a look here at the 200 millibar wind environment. So this is starting off, uh, this actually starts off here at 8 p.m. yesterday evening. We notice how the Atlantic Basin is relatively shut down. We have a lot of troughiness over most of the basin, causing a lot of shear out here in the westernlies. But you notice off the coast of Africa, you've got these upper level easternlies here. And this is what's allowing for at least a little bit more robust tropical wave activity to come off the coast of Africa. Now, during the next several weeks or so, we're going to start to see more troughiness out here across the central part of the main development region. You notice this big trough up here. There's a little upper level anticyclone there, uh, but overall the conditions will remain relatively unfavorable, which isn't unheard of for July standards. Again, we're talking July 3rd, not September 3rd. However, the El Nino is starting to play a factor in what happens towards the hurricane season. I want to talk about that more here in a second. But as you progress throughout about 10 days, you start to notice the pattern does begin to flip at least somewhat here. And this is what we are talking about. If we kind of go out to the latter part of this forecast, uh, this is valid for July 17th at 8 o'clock at night. You notice how the pattern much more favors these anomalous upper level easternlies across the entire uh, central and eastern part of the main development region. And you've got this shear over across the Caribbean and western part of the Atlantic Basin. So this is actually here kind of an anomalously favorable pattern for supporting tropical cyclone activity in the main development region. But of course, you start to get to the Caribbean, you notice that there's going to be relatively strong shear out here across this area. So this is something we'll monitor as we talked about the window of favorability in the MDR does start to pick up after July 18th. If you look here at, we'll take a look at the ensemble mean sea level pressure for this time. You notice there's not a lot of storm tracks out in this area, but generally an area of lower pressure out here. And that would be indicative for allowing some gradual systems to roll off the coast of Africa and have a shot to develop. But of course, we're talking long range at this point. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt. And over here in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we're going to be also watching a few storms that might develop. Again, we're taking a look here at the ensemble mean sea level pressure. So all these little red areas indicate an area of lower pressure. And you notice that over the next several days, there generally is a fairly good consensus out to about day seven, which is right here, that we're going to be dealing with some type of low pressure system out in this area. Now, whether this is over coastal Mexico at this time or far enough away from land that it really won't bother Mexico remains to be seen. And there's even more storms that will likely develop thereafter as well. This is the day 10 forecast period. And you notice that again, there's even more storms that develop behind this initial system over here. So a lot to watch over the next several days in the Eastern Pacific, but it is relatively quiet in the Atlantic minus those tropical waves, but those really won't be much of a concern uh, except for portions of the Antilles over the next couple of days. We're also going to be monitoring several rounds of potential severe weather across the contiguous United States. Today, it's two slight risk areas, one up in the northern high plains and northwest U.S. and one out here in the southeast United States and also into the mid-Atlantic and northeast states. We continue that on to day two's outlook. We have a slight risk stretching from Minnesota all the way down into Colorado and also down into portions of Kansas, followed by another severe weather threat on day three, large slight risk area from Colorado, New Mexico, back through portions of southwestern Wisconsin into Indiana. And then day four, we have another slight risk out across the northern high plains, places like Denver, Colorado, back and through the Texas and Oklahoma Panhandle, and even up into portions of southeastern Montana. So a lot going on in that realm. So stay safe out there, all right? So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon. And even of course, I am Michael Romali. God bless, take care, and I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next several days.